Okay, so Lineage OS 21 is now available on the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5, and it works great. Let's show you how to install it. I'll also show how to install the Google Play Store and also expand the partition. So let's go to Constacane's page, search for devices and Raspberry Pi 5. And this is the version I'm using, Lineage OS 21, Constacane, Android 14. The AOSP builds are very basic. Lineage OS is much nicer to use. So let's click on that and scroll down. And the version you want is the top one here, RPI 5.zip. So let's click on that and go for free access. I'm not a robot and start download. Okay, so that's downloading. Two minutes to go. My background, by the way, was created with uh, Copilot on my iPad. I think I put create an image of the Windows XP Bliss wallpaper with a robot on a BMX with a Raspberry Pi chest. I think that's what I put, but it created this and I played around with it for ages. There are some brilliant things you can create with it. Anyway, back to this. Okay, so the download's finished. So let's pop an SD card in my Pi I'm running it currently from a USB SSD drive, so let's pop that in there, and that's been recognized. It's come up with a load of partitions because it already had Android on it, but let's open Raspberry Pi Imager. Let's go for Choose OS. Scroll down to the bottom and use Custom, and you can see here Lineage 21, so let's click on that. Choose storage, that's the SD card I've just put in. Hit next. No to applying any changes, and yes. Pop your password in, and come back when that's all done. So that's all finished, let's hit continue and close down Imager. And now I'm gonna take that out, but put it back in again, because there's one thing that you need to change. Well, I don't because I'm using an SD card, but if you're using, using NVMe or uh, a USB drive, you'll need to do these changes. So we need to go to the boot partition here. This is on the SD card. And if we go to config.txt and have a look through here, here we go, look, boot device. So it's already selected Android SD card, but if we wanted to boot off a different device, what we need to do is basically put a hash in here and delete for USB or we need to delete for NVMe. So the one that is without the hash is the one that it will boot from, but obviously I don't need to do that because I'm using an SD card, so there's not gonna be any changes here. So if I quit, it probably won't even, oh, it wants me to save it, so let's do that. And shut down KDE Plasma. And I'm going to boot up from the SD card that's in my Pi. Uh, I'm going to unplug this drive, although it isn't going to make any difference because it defaults to SD card if you haven't changed anything. But let's start that up. And Lineage OS is booting for the first time. So we can hit start and accept the license and pick your region and your time zone. And next, and next. And I always put a pin on mine and next, and just verify that. I'm not gonna restore anything, so I'm gonna hit skip. I like three button navigation, so I'm gonna hit next, and start. And if you've used the AOSP version, you'll notice that this is just much more usable straight away with a decent web browser. So first of all, let's go to Constacane's page. And click on it. We're going back to the Raspberry Pi 5 bit we were on before because there's some useful information in here, loads of useful information. Let's close down the ad. So we scroll down to the version that we're on, so this one, and there's all sorts of information in here. And one of them is about the Google Play Store. There's also information about Widevine, so for encryption for video streaming and music streaming services. I've got a separate video about Android TV if you want a bit more information about that, but this is the bit we want. So mine the G apps, which is basically going to give us the Google Play Store. So let's click on that and download this version. So for Android 14 ARM, 
and download. Not sure if it's done it, so I'm going to click on it again and download. Oh, it is downloading two files, look. Now if we go back again, so there's a bit of information in here about how to resize. So just click on this, consent, and look for the download, which is here. And then primary download and download. And that won't take very long. So let's go into the files app and downloads. So you can see I've got two Mind the G apps here. I'm just going to delete one of them and OK. Now we need to go to settings. At the top here, type in restart. And you can see advanced restart comes up. Scroll down and you can see advanced restart. So let's switch that on. Now we can drag down, left click and drag down from the top left. And you see we get power. We'll do restart and recovery. Now we can do install, downloads. And we'll do this lineage one first of all. So click on lineage resize and swipe to confirm. You sometimes have to do it really quickly. And then we'll do wipe Dalvik and then swipe to wipe. And reboot system. Now let's check the storage. So if we go to settings and storage, there you go, 13% used of 55.74. If you haven't changed this, it would say that most of it was already being used. So now let's go back to the web browser, type Aptide, which is a different app store to the Google Play Store, but it's got an app we need. So click on that, click on the download at the top here, and download. And then download. Again, we can drag down from here to check the progress. Download complete. So let's expand that and click on it to install it. So I need to allow this. So click on settings and allow from this source and install. Now we can open that up. If we go back to the home page. You can see it's on here, so let's click on it, click OK, and skip. Now we're going to search and type in device ID for Android. Now, unfortunately, there's loads of apps, and it's really hard to know which ones work. Uh, the one that works for me is the one here with a capital I and a lowercase d. Uh, I've used it because I've tested it just now, so click on that. Click on install and OK. And now we need to allow that. And in settings, we need to allow Aptide to install apps. You only need to do this once. Once you've done it, it will carry on and let you do it. So we press back and install and install. OK, so device ID for Android is there. So let's hit open. And we can go back to the home screen we press in the circle so now if we drag up we need to make sure that that advanced restart is still enabled i think it already is but let's just type in restart again advanced restart scroll down ah it's already on so let's restart to recovery and go for install again and mind the G apps and swipe. Okay, that's all done. Wipe Dalvik and swipe again. And then reboot system.
Okay, so back in again, and if you scroll up, you should have the Google Play Store. Here we go. So let's click on that and sign in. Okay, so you can see here, device isn't Play Protect certified. We know this, this is correct. So click on that. Device isn't certified. Click on that and scroll down. Click on register your device. And you need to sign in with a Google account. I've got two-factor authentication, so I'm going to authorize that on my iPad. And you'll get couldn't sign in, but don't worry about that. Try it again. So click on the Play Store. And when it's finished updating Google Apps, you can sign in. So sign in again. And follow the same procedure. So click on the link. Isn't certified. Register your device. And this time it's let me in. So we need to go back to that app that we downloaded earlier on, the device ID one. Scroll to the bottom and hit copy on Google Services Framework ID. We can press the square and that will take us back to this page. And then right click and paste in here. You can see it says pasted. I don't know why it's not showing up, but I'm going to hit I'm not a robot. And let's try it again. Okay, well, let's hit register and see what it says. We should get a positive message down the bottom left. Okay, no, it didn't copy. So let's go back to it again. So I'm going to uninstall the device ID app. So let's click on that and uninstall. And let's try again. device ID for Android sure it was that one I used and install and install and let's open that up ah, and here we have a Google Services Framework ID right let's hit copy let's go back It's still there and let's paste that in click on I'm not a robot and hit register device registered ID converted to so now it's a bit of a waiting game because it won't work straight away if you try and log into the Google Play Store uh, it will say that you haven't got an account or it's not registered but you just keep trying it when it comes up with that message, uh, just shut down, restart. Uh, if you've got something else to do, maybe do that for five minutes and keep restarting to system. Okay, so it's the next day. I ran out of time to do it the same day, uh, but it usually takes, in my experience, probably anything between sort of 10 and 30 minutes. So let's try and sign in again. Pop my password in, answer on my iPad. Aha, so it looks like it's worked, so welcome. So I agree, and let's just accept all of this, and there we are. So if we want to install something, we can go to Games, Happy Wheels, I'm not sure if that works with the joypad, but it will work on the, uh, the RAS pad that I showed earlier on with touchscreen. You can see it's installing fine. And let's hit play and see if it does work with the controller. Now it definitely isn't a joypad game. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do it with uh, mouse and keyboard, which is not ideal for uh, all the leaning and everything like that. And just show you things like split screen. So if we press and hold on an app, we can do split screen. And we can pick the Google Play Store and app tied. So we've got two app stores on at the same time and let's just go back to Consta Kang's page because if you are having trouble with anything like a touchscreen display or a small display or or just anything in general it's always worth looking back at this page and if you can't find the answer on say for instance this Pi 5 build just look for another build uh, because there'll be different comments under that 
So if we go for this one, so this is the build that we're using. So it tells you what's working and any issues. And the FAQ is worth looking at for all other things, but also it's worth looking at things like the keyboard shortcuts. So you can see F1 for home, F2 for back, F3 multitasking, F4 menu, F5 power, F11 and 12 volume up and down. Well, I have volume buttons on this keyboard, but you can use those as well. And definitely check the comments to see if there's someone having the same problem as you if you're having a problem. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. <laughs>